Welcome CSC 121 to the dreaded EX28 running pace exercise. And this is different than the first running pace because we're doing it in TK Inter, which adds a whole aspect of complexity to it. But we do have a GUI and I have a sample here. We're going to try to do this in Repel it. But before I do that, let's look at my sample in VS Code because that might be a little easier to look at. And this is the finished version of the GUI. You can see there's there's three input fields or entry fields here, one for minutes, seconds, and miles. So we'll put in like 3.1 miles, which is a 5K. Let's just put something in. We'll put in 24, and we'll put in miles of 3.1. And then you can put in whatever date you want. So if you forgot to enter a date for three days ago when you ran, you could do that, or you could use today's date. So if you use today's date, it just puts in today's date. And we have a function to do that, and we also have a way to put in a date and then take that information, and we're going to put that in a CSV file. Now, it's a little crowded down here. I did have some spacing, some empty spacing in here to push that out, but I took that out just so there wouldn't be so many widgets going on. And then when we hit the Show Pace button, it'll create a, a pace per mile. So here's the pace per mile, and that's exactly 8 minutes per mile based on that time that's there on the 3.1 mile. So it's 8 minutes per mile. And then this still isn't finished. Then when we save this, we're going to hit the Save button. And what should happen is it should actually create something in here. And there it is. It puts the date in, and it puts the pace in. So it's just a CSV file, a spreadsheet file, that's basically collecting that information so that you can keep track of it. So that's that in VS Code. If we go back to Repel it, I'm going to stretch this out a little bit. We can use TK Intern Repellent, and it has been getting better and easier to use. So we'll try it out and see how this works. It sometimes takes a little while. It doesn't look quite the same as it does in VS Code. Get the little countdown down here, and there it is. And I'm going to put in the same thing, and I'll use today again. And then I'll show pace. And there's my eight minutes. And then when I hit save, now this doesn't always work. So I'm not sure if this will work or not, but I'm not sure if this will work or not, but let's hope it does. And if it doesn't, no big deal. So we have a CSV file called Paces that's in here. And that did not put it in. So we'll have to figure out what's happening there. I've had it work some of the time as far as putting that in. The last time I did it, it actually did do that. Oh, there it is. I guess I just had to update it. So there it is. It's showing up now. So it's actually working. So that's pretty good that we can actually do this. Now, every once in a while, you're going to get some weird thing going on here. So you may have to refresh it or whatever. But to get this started, we'll try to do as much as we can in here. And if you don't have access to VS Code or you don't want to download VS Code, we'll try to do in here as best we can. So what we're going to do first is go back to my Warren. And we're going to go into coursework. Now, this was from Unit 10. And a couple things in here. I have the link that we have a repellent that you can start with in here. And then there's also, there's going to be the videos that you're watching right now. And there's also handouts, which are helpful because they have the grid on there to help you set up the grid. And I'll show that as well. Let me go and do that right now. That's under Document Resources. And that's also Unit 10. And here it is. And it's a PDF, so you can just leave it open. And there's some basic information here about what you're supposed to do. And then there's a sample. And this kind of shows what the finished sample should look like which we just saw. And then there's another sample. This actually has kind of the grid set up. And I ended up doing a grid setup of two columns and I believe 10 rows. So if the rows start with zero, there's, there's 10 all together. Now the only difficult part we had, and we had this with the attendees as well, is putting these things in here, which was kind of a pain. We ended up making a frame widget and making that, it's almost like putting a table inside a table. We made a frame widget that actually had three columns and two rows. And then we basically put that inside our M, our root widget that we have, our root window widget. So it's basically a table inside a table. And that's how we set those up. So there's labels inside of here and there's entry fields inside of here that are in that frame. And the frame is basically in this row, which is row six. And it's in the second column, which is column one. Because remember, our columns go zero and one. So that's the way it's set up. And I also did this to help you out too. If you go to page three, I set this up so that you can actually see how I did it. And maybe you could do it the same way because that's the way I'll do it in the video is you can see where all my labels are, where all my entries are, and where all my buttons are. So there's a lot of labels. There's a, a lab T, which is a title label. And then there's one, two, three, four. And then there's five. 
and then I made these six, seven, and eight, the ones that are inside the frame. And then nine is this one over here, which gives a little example. And then the last one is 10, which just says pace mile. Now these are all sticky east in that column. These are mostly sticky west, pushing the other way. This one is a column span of two, the title one, so it goes across the top. And most of these are, are kind of sticky in their own right. But also we have these entry fields in here. There's entry one, entry two, entry three. Those are the ones that we're entering information into. And this is the button that's actually going to put today's date in here. Or you can physically enter another date if you wish, but whatever one you would use. So if it was today, you'd hit the button. If not, you would just enter a date. And then what happens when you show pace, it doesn't do anything with the date. It just puts the pace down here. And then when it's time to save it, it saves the pace and the date, and it puts that in a CSV file. So here's the other entries. Here's There's three buttons that are actually going to be running functions. And that's pretty much it. So in itself, there's not a whole lot of complicated things going on. Each little piece kind of builds up. So it's probably a little more of a little more of a daunting project because of so much going into it. But that's why I'm gonna I'm gonna give you some shortcuts here and I'm gonna let you use some code, kind of work with in a starter file so you don't have to go through the whole thing completely from scratch if you had missed this or if you just got you just struggled somewhere along the way. So what you're gonna be able to do is go back here and I even have a starter kind of repel it that you can use. So that's going to be start and you're going to click on that. And then what you can do is you can fork it. So you could fork it into your account and you could change the name. If you want to change the name and I'm just going to put start because this is how I'm starting the video, but you probably want to put your last name on here, which would be helpful because if I ever fork your file, then I, I know which one it is when it's in here. So I'm going to do that first and there it is. Now what you have in here, just so you're aware, is you have this is where you're going to do all your your tk inter work and you could preview it here and it should preview okay you might have to refresh every once in a while but then also what i have for you i have first of all the csv file which you don't have to worry about until the end and an import csv file where i have some of the code here to help you with that with the uh, csv portion of it where we take the date and we take the information that was in the paste and we put it in a CSV file. So I have that there. So a lot of that's done for you. So you just have to get it into your code. And then also the date time. Here's a date time module. And there's the short date, which takes today's date. There's also some other code here, which is set up to take another date. So that's set up for you. So you don't have to recreate that from scratch. And then also this running pace thing. And I my first one that I did, I actually had it messed up because it did like 64 seconds and it shouldn't go over a minute. But I fixed it, and so I have code here that you're just going to kind of take this code and put it inside your function. There'll be other things to go in here. Like these things here, you're going to have to get information from the fields. Uh, but everything else should be set up, and then you'll just display information in the field. So a lot of this will be done for you other than what I didn't do for you. And maybe you have it done already because a lot of people started it off is the original code. And that's to actually set it up. And what I'll do is I'll just go through and kind of show you it. Everything you do here, you're going to do in your main.py. So don't worry about any of this yet. But once you start here, the first thing we have to do is make sure that you have a, a main loop at the end. And typically, we're going to start off with that main equals uh, TK like this. And then you can use this information. I'll stretch this out because we don't need to preview anything yet. We're going to do the main. That's our root window. Then we have a title called running pace. And then we're going to use the configure property, which we can put, put in a background color which is just that kind of light green color. Notice the higher numbers in the middle in R, G, and B. The G is the higher number, so it's kind of a pale green. And we just have some padding that goes around the entire window itself. So when, when you look at this thing, remember here's what we're looking at, that's the padding that goes around here. That's kind of on the outside of that, so we have some margin. So that's the way it's gonna be set up. So this whole thing here is kind of our M, and remember we're gonna have a FRA1, which is gonna be that the M is going to be the root of that. So we'll deal with that then. So going back to this, that's how we're going to start this off. And then also make sure you have your, your main loop at the end. This will be at the end and we'll finish everything off. So you can kind of return, put a bunch of returns in here, just so you know that this is always going to be at the end. Now we will put functions in front of here. So this won't be the very first thing, but this will start us off. And what I'll go through now is just getting things set up. Now I'm not going to go through every little bit of code because most people did this already. And it's just, it's very time consuming. So what I'll do is I'll just paste in the code. The first part is actually setting it up. Here it is. Here's all the code. This is just the widgets. So let me spread this out and I'll even close this up over here so you can see the widgets. So, so after import, here's the widgets and here's basically 
we're initializing all of these. So there's our lab T, our label T, and it's a label, and it's based on root M, and there's our text that's in there. Now this thing's on two lines right now, it looks like. If we spread this out, it might go, go up. But this one's on two lines because it's so long. So it breaks on two lines, but I'll just move it up there so you can see that that's on line eight. And then we have our label one, two, three. That's where we enter information, our minutes, seconds, and miles. And they're, and they're just labeled. That's all this stuff over here. So th that's all we're looking at is labels right now. Minutes, seconds, miles, dates. Those are just the labels that are on the, on the first column, column one. So that's all that we have set up right now. And then we have a button, which is used today, which is the date button. And then we also have our entries which are one, two, three. Those are the entries which are these, one, two, and three. So, so far what, I'm, what we just looked at were these and the use today. And we don't have a grid. We're going to use a grid layout. So we're just kind of setting everything up. Here's the frame widget. And if you're just kind of looking at this, you could stop the video and do it. But we made a frame that is a root of M and has the same background color. And then we kind of set this up so that we have label six, seven, and eight that's on top on the first row, and then entry four, five, and six that's in the second row, and they're, they're each gonna be in column zero, one, and two, and zero, one, and two, and they'll be set up like that when you go down to see the grid. So that's the way that's set up, and then finally we'll have this label nine is over here, button two is down here, and then there's label 10, and this is entry seven, and that's button three. So those are the last things that you'll see here down here, button two, label nine, label 10. It doesn't matter what order they're in as long as you can kind of follow what's going on. So I broke this up so that I know that this is the frame part because it's a lot of code here to kind of keep track of. And there's all these aspects in here. There's text, there's background color, there's fonts that are specified. In some cases, there's padding Y on it. That's what that is. And notice that when you use font, you have to make sure you have the extra parentheses in there for font. Even when you don't specify a font, you should choose none and some of these have the uh, commands on them already. Now we didn't we didn't do them yet. We're going to set them up, so I should probably I should probably take them out of there because we should do that when we actually set up the functions. But there's two right there. I don't know if we have any others. Here's another one used today. So we have three commands or functions that we're actually going to call. So I'll take them out for now, and we'll put them in when it's time to use that. So this is the first part, and we wouldn't really see anything yet because we didn't lay it out. We didn't use we didn't use our grid yet. So the last part of this, the next section before this, is going to be the grid, and that'll be all the visual GUI stuff. That'll basically have it look like, like this. That'll create everything that you see here. So I'm just going to put this stuff in here. So here's all my grid information, and we're just specifying a row and a column. So that's all we're doing. So just for example, lab T, it says row 0, column span 2. So you can see this one is in row zero and it's a column span two because it goes over column zero and column one. And so the next one would be, if we were talking about lab one, it would basically be row one and it would be column zero. And it would also be a sticky east. And this would be row two, column zero, row three, column zero, row four, column zero. And then these would be in row one, column one row two, column one, row three, column one, and so on. So you get the idea here, and you can kind of look at this, and you'll have this to print out and look at as well. Again, it takes some time to do this. Hopefully you did this already, and you might have it set up, but if not, you can see the code here that set that up. Everything has to be accounted for. All the labels are accounted for, and all the rows have to be accounted for. There's not a lot of different code that goes in here, so you could do a lot of copy-pasting. You just have to make sure you change all the numbers. And the only thing that's a little different here is remember that that these label six, seven, and eight, and also entry four, five, and six, they say row one, and we already have a row one up there. That's because these these particular ones are the ones that are all in frame one. And actually, I should really have these here too. So those are all in frame one. So they're a little bit different. That's why they start off with with row one. So there's only there's only row one and row zero as far as the entries and the labels go. And re really it might be better to have the labels above it because that's the way they're set up on the grid. And then that's really it. So so this is all the grid information that's here. If you just look through that quick, you could always stop the video if you need to just look at this stuff. But this is all the grid information starting with lab T and going all down to button three at the end. 
And don't forget, main loop should be at the end. So that's how this starts. And I could kind of check it out just to see what's happening. Now, I'm not sure if I probably have some things in here that might be missing, but I could just see what happens so far. Now, when you check this out in Repel it, I would kind of stretch this out a little when you run it and kind of do that. Let's see what happens here. And there it is. So it's starting off OK. So so that's e even though I copied and pasted this, I, I didn't type all that code in. But once you get this code, this is what it should look like in Repel it. So that's what there we have our button. So and you, you can fill these things out. We don't have any of these functions working yet, but that's what we're going to do in part two. We're going to start working with these functions and start getting some information that we can get from these fields and then kind of put them down here. The first part is going to be getting the minutes, seconds, and miles and having them display down here. Then we'll worry about the dates last, and then we'll worry about saving to the CSV file last. So, so that's part one of this. That's the visual part. And again, it's a you know it's kind of time consuming setting up all of this information, but basically it's really just accounting for each widget and and kind of initializing it, and then making sure that you have it all specified a place in the grid. And I have all this code here, so you know you should be able to check it out. I'll show it one more time if you need to just look at the code dealt with this in class at some point so this should be somewhat familiar and it's very similar to our ex27 so so we're going to stop here and then we're going to start working with with functions in part two of this video series